Hi, everybody. Sorry. So uh, just in case this doesn't go well, just laugh. If it does, you can laugh a little bit louder. Just give me some confidence. So that'd be great. Cool. All right. Yeah. So <laughs> uh, welcome, I guess, to PNB Talks before I get started. Thank you all for coming. Want a special shout out to SingLab for coming. Thank you, guys. And my mommy. Hello. Hi, mom. OK. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Um, so when we look at uh, behavior, we look at a bunch of different aspects, usually internal. Uh, but today, I want to look a little bit more into the sort of external stimuli that can affect our behaviors. So uh, introducing cranking up the heat. So I want you to think about these metaphors that we use for a second. We have uh, hot-headed, uh, cold shoulder, warm feelings, warm behavior. If we try to really break down these words, it really has no meaning. So when we look at, like, for example, cold shoulder, what exactly does cold shoulder mean? Like, we're not really measuring the temperature of our shoulders, but uh, what we are doing is we are indicating some sort of behavioral, behavioral action, right? Uh, so when we say cold shoulder, we know that it's bad. We know that cold means bad. But when we say warm, we know that it's positive social interaction. So today I want to look a little bit more into digging into this sort of central abstract idea, which is how temperature can indicate behavior. So it turns out, woo, temperature does indicate behavior. Surprise. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> um, and so I think it's important to realize it's, it's a little bit intuitive, right? So when we're tossed in a room with our coworkers, think of a really, really stuffy day. I know if you toss me, my sister, and my roommate in our apartment with no AC on a very hot summer day, wouldn't recommend watching that. <laughs> Gets a little bit nasty. Um, but yeah, it's important to realize that our interactions on a day-to-day -day basis are definitely influenced by these sort of ambient temperature changes. So social behaviors are important, right? So, you know, yeah, temperature, yeah, it's so cool. Thank you for my talk. Thanks for coming to listen. Um, but social behaviors, we have to realize their significance before we even analyze what temperature does. Um, and so evolutionarily speaking, um, be social behaviors were really important to us, right? They're intrinsic to our survival as a species. Uh, in our sort of hunter-gatherer societies, uh, it was important to work with one another in order to, grab, uh, to grab resources and to survive, right? Uh, and so today, they're still necessary. Unfor you know, luckily for us, Fortino's is just down the road, uh, so we can go spend a couple dollars there and grab the resources that we need. But unfortunately, evolutionarily, you had to work in this sort of mutualistic cooperation in order to get what you needed to survive. Uh, today, now, uh, as our societies grow and expand, uh, it's important to realize that these social behaviors are still important. Uh, so actually, in terms of development, uh, our psychological and emotional development also relies on pro-sociality and altruism, which are these other-oriented behaviors with no explicit reward. So today, now we want to look a little bit more into how temperature can actually influence um, our behaviors, right? So we know that uh, when the temperature in the room is cranked up on a high, so is your irritability. Uh, but the reason for this is actually because it mimics a depletion of resources. So we talk about in evolution how resources were so important to our survival. Well, when there was a limited uh, capacity of resources, it was sort of, it was important for individuals to be a little bit selfish sometimes, right? So although we had to work together to gather these resources, when they were limited, it was everybody for themselves, right? And so temperature can mimic this sort of depletion. Uh, and it does this through fatigue. So uh, energy is also a resource that we use, right? And so conserving energy is important. And so uncomfortably hot temperatures particularly can mimic that depletion. So uh, they decided to take this to Russia. They said, OK, let's look at it experimentally. Uh, <laughs> they're like, yeah, let's go to Russia. That sounds like fun. Um, so <laughs> they looked at two particular years. Um, they had one where the heat was a little bit higher than usual. Shout out to global warming. Thank you. Uh, and then they had these sort of warm ambient temperatures. And what they found out, well, they were looking really at cashier behaviors, so those helping behaviors. Uh, and they found that cashiers in the extreme heat condition uh, were less likely to voluntarily initiate these um, helping behaviors. And those who were in the warm ambient condition who actually happened to stay, so it was within subjects, uh, they found out that they were uh, more willing to help with other people. And so where is this important? So we have, you know, we don't live again in these hunter-gatherer societies, uh, but we do have certain societal and organizational structures that are still important uh, today. Uh, and so one important one is charity giving and donations. So temperature can actually affect how willing somebody is uh, to donate to charity. Uh, so on those incredibly hot days, the wallets are still in the pocket. Um, another thing is complaints. Sorry, Joe. Uh, <laughs> and Jen. <laughs> Uh, in these uh, organizational settings, so in the workplace, uh, it, it can actually decrease productivity because people are less likely to work together. Uh, so uncomfortably hot temperatures particularly are really bad in the workplace. 
even more so voting. That was really interesting to me. Um, so on uncomfortably hot days, uh, they found out that um, individuals who were voting were more likely to vote for the incumbent party, so the party that's still in office. Uh, this doesn't apply to uh, southern U.S. because Trump's in office now, but uh, everything is fine. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> so at the end of the day, um, it's important to recognize, like, okay, we can't change the temperature, right? As much as we'd like to toss 5,000 AC machines outside, it's not really going to do anything. Uh, but what we can do is uh, change our behaviors when these ambient temperature changes occur. So the first step is awareness. So when you realize that your work spouse is like annoying you so much, maybe take a step back and realize where these sort of uh, changes are coming from. And then on top of that, you can start to implement these sort of strategies. So I've listed three for you today. <laughs> wow, smile. Uh, <laughs> So uh, one thing that you can do is uh, emotional regulation. So when you realize, again, take a step back, analyze your behavior, and realize that it's because of these temperature changes. It could be some sort of factor that's contributing to that. Another thing is rewarding positive behaviors. So say in the workplace, uh, Joe, every time I present a good presentation like now, uh, you can give me a cookie, right? So every time you just reward these positive behaviors to increase, right? Uh, and that depends, again, on the structure, but that's something that you can implement. And so at the end of the day, pro-sociality is really important to us. Uh, it is something that we still need to survive and to maintain our society and our societal structures. And it's important to recognize how temperature can influence that so we can regulate these behaviors. So when you realize that the temperature is cranking up a little bit too high, you can also crank up the kindness a little bit too. Cool. Thank you. Yeah.